So, without further ado, let's get into wine number one. I'm Laura, I am the head of production and the co-owner of Unicozello. All right, so wine number one. Oh, it's quite lifted, smells like maybe sort of dry aromatic white. It's giving clear white wine, a um, little bit, oh, hello. It smells a little bit rubbery as well. Um, <sighs> rubbery rubber nuts is what I'm getting from that. Really like golden circle pineapple out the tin, like really ripe, juicy, oh, lovely broad texture, sparkling acid, really great, great vitality to it. But it's, yeah, it's like, it's a bit nutty as well. I really enjoy this wine. Yeah, I really love the acidity of this wine. It really um, hangs around. It's a little bit prickly, um, but kind of makes you want to go back for a little bit more. Uh, so I would, I would have six bottles of this. I guess retail, I'd probably be happy with sort of anywhere from 35 to $45 for this wine. <laughs> Wine number two, similar sort of color to the first wine. It's a little bit greener as well. Still in that kind of riper territory in that like, you know, peach. There is a bit of reduction here as well, a bit of flintiness. There is, is yeah, actually quite reductive. Oak's making it a little bit spicy. Um, still got nice acidity, a little bit more oily than the last one. It's a good wine. Um, probably not something that I would um, naturally lean towards, um, but it's definitely good quality winemaking. Tastes all right, tastes okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the nose on that is bizarre. I like, I don't know what's causing it to be like that. It's not even like the other one. We say like other wines have sulfur in them and um, or they're reductive and they smell like, they smell like farts, which is one thing. Really simple, really simple, quite neutral. Yeah, got that more like brown lime, squeezed lime juice, kind of grapefruit pithy thing going on. Really austere. There is a pepperiness to it, there's a greenness to it. It's clean, nice bit of vanilla. Um, probably a little bit more serious than the last one. So, 50 to $60 for this wine. And I would, I'd personally probably only buy maybe two bottles. I think it's got potential to sell it. Um, so maybe drink one and then sell one for a little bit because I think it will look really good with some age. Wow, no, uh, one, like, uh, yeah, you gotta buy a glass, I guess. One glass, but 20 bucks. That's, um, it's triggered something inside of me that I didn't know was there, but it's definitely a me thing, not this wine. Okay, so wine number three, and it looks totally different from the first two. The first two was super clean um, and quite sort of green um, highlights on them, whereas this is very cloudy, it's a little bit orange. Number three, now this is what we call in the biz as turbid. Whoa, that's funky. That's cool. It's like, tastes like solo. Really, it's like spritzy, lemony, refreshing. This chilled down in a tumbler over ice would be sick on a hot day. This is like, this is, um, this is good natty wine. I hope it stays this good. I should probably speed up through this tasting so the other guys can taste these while they're still relatively fresh. It is a little bit hard to tell the variety on this just because there's a lot of dye or influence from the style. Um, the fact that it's, I'm gathering skin contact. Um, maybe age for a little bit. Um, and those characters actually quite cloudy as well. Like there's a little bit of leaves left in the wine, which is sort of masking some of the varietal character. That's really cool. Sick example of like orange, lemon solo, solo squash. Uh, price point, that'll be 38 bucks. It's the magic number. It remains to be the case. And I'll have six of those. But it's, it is that, that pineapple thing again more yeah like you know yellow yellow nectar and vibe and i do really like that yeah that savoriness even though it is it is mousy but it, i kind of like it in the context of the wine which is rare for me i'm generally pretty anti it i would you know i think it's kind of a fun playful wine um it would be it's pretty approachable um, but i would probably only pay sort of 25 to 30 dollars uh, retail for the wine you know i'd be happy drinking a bottle of this um, with some friends in summer um, it's got some beautiful kind of apricot kernel and fresh fruit flavors um, but I would probably only grab a couple of bottles of this one. Um, still no idea on the variety though. Number four. So we're leaning into that skin contact thing, um, but it's filtered and racked and everything like that. It's got this like kind of yellow gold opaque thing, but it's not like, it's not like the last one where it's just like, fuck it, we're just gonna leave everything in. Could be aged, got a whole bunch of things going on. It's really yummy. I don't know what the guys thought, um, but that's really yummy. Yeah, so it's some kind of dessert wine. 
Um, it could, that could come from botrytis or it could be a winemaking um, practice um, that's been chosen. They're really difficult wines to make. Oh, it's sweet. Wow, what an interesting wine. I mean, it's got heaps of, they've obviously cut the ferment on it and kept a whole pile of sugar in there. It is sweet. Oh yeah, the sweetness here is throwing me, but interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's sweet. That like honeyed, um, honeycomb, like apricot, Turkish delight. Like it's, it's sweet, but it's just, it kind of finishes clean. It's still got a decent amount of acid to it. I really quite like it. It's oh, it's almost overt. Whoever's made this, been really intentional about the style that they want to make. Um, I gather they've probably got a lot of experience making this wine in terms of varieties that would make a style like this. Um, I think, I don't think we're looking at an alternative variety here. It's got to be something more classic. And smelly. It's reminding me, like it, it tastes so similar to that um, Moscato Dusty that we had the other week when we were doing the sort of Italian Nebbiolo bracket and things like that. But just a little bit more, like the Moscato is like an icy pole. This is like a, this is like a gelato or something like that. There's just a little bit more depth to it. Number five, still gold, still ripe and gold. What are we showing here? Yeah, okay, okay. I think I know where we're at here. Okay, and wine number five. There's no giveaway straight away on variety or region with this wine. Okay, that's more in line with the first wine, in the sense that it is more of that sort of nutty, it's really nice. Raw texture, great acid, nice kind of custard apple, nuts, grilled nuts, stone fruit. I love that broad texture, just makes me want to, like the, the blue cheese thing, not anywhere on the palate. Yeah, nice amount of body, the acidity is really carrying through. Again, in terms of variety, I'm really thrown. Like this kind of style, with a little bit of oak. It looks like there's some age on the wine as well. Sort of makes me think Chardonnay. That's usually the variety that you would use for this sort of style of winemaking. Yeah, like hazelnuts running all the way through that. It's a nice color too, quite dehydrated. Kind of alarming that every time I use the word dehydrated, I'm referring to piss on this show. Oh yeah, yeah, into it. Love this cashew nut thing. It's like almost, yeah, like really like oily entry level nut. <laughs> um, but yeah, the oxidative like cashew lime thing. I would probably buy a couple of bottles and I think if this was, you know, 35 to $40, that's probably pretty good value. Um, that's not, I expect that it's probably going to be more than that, but that's sort of where I personally would want to drink this wine for. And number six, uh, unfiltered, uh, yellow kind of gold area, not as unfiltered as that third wine, not as kind of gold as that fourth wine, just kind of in that Goldilocks zone. Emphasis on the gold. And then wine number six, last one. Um, it's a lot more lifted. It's a lot more aromatic than the last wine, like very um, more sort of peaches and apples. I don't hate my Vidello shout on all of these. Uh, it's, it's probably gonna sound ridiculous when uh, I'm talking about it to Noah and Laura, but I don't know, it's just, especially number three, but number three is probably like a field blend that has it in it as well. It's like one of those things that you could drink quite easily, but if you want to spend, take the time, I think this is one of those, one of my favorite little styles of wine where it's like, it's, it suggests all of these, you know, great deal of intense drinkability. It's just something you like, you physically want to just chug, but if you just want to go, if you take a step back and you look at it, you go, oh wow, that's amazing. Quite dry finish. Um, it's got a little bit of structure. It doesn't necessarily feel like oak, it feels more like it's been aged for a little bit longer. It's inoffensive, doesn't have any characteristic that stands out, smacks you in the face and goes like, this is what this wine's about. It's just exactly, if you had an NPC that came up to you and said, I would like a glass of white wine, please, and you gave them that, they would be more than happy with what you've given them. NPC white, we'll call that. NPC white, uh, that'll be cheap. That'll be 28 bucks. And I'll have three of those. But for me, I reckon is my favorite variety, Chenin Blanc. And let's see if uh, Henry and Laura agree. Is, isn't it nice to have just a great, great banger lineup of your favorite wine? So good. Cool, guys, welcome back to the table. Six of these, I thought this was gonna be simple stuff. I was like, white wines, there's one variety to guess here, light work, we're basically doing the work of uh, tasting except it's one sixth of it. I was wrong. How did you guys go guessing this? Yeah, not the most straightforward task. It, you really have to do the whole gamut. You have to finish complete the whole gamut before you, before you even had an idea of what it could possibly be. Because basically up until any point, like, like even still, like it could be literally anything. Mm. It could be anything. Do you have any solid feelings about any of it, Laura? 
No, I was taken in all different directions across the whole course of the six wines. Um, the one thing I could see in common was that they all had this really zingy acidity that mm -hmm. sort of lingered around. Um, mm -hmm. I really loved that in all of the wines. Yeah. Um, but there was such difference in style, especially with wines three and four, um, and that's what really threw me. I just couldn't find a common thread um, between them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, we'll start at the beginning. Wine number one, Noah. So I think, like, you know, what kind of Laura was alluding to with like how it's so broad in style. Like by the end of it, like by the end of the whole tasting, it's like it's gone through so many different styles. It almost narrowed the scope of what variety it could possibly be. Because oh, good for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wonderful to hear, man. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought at least. Um, and I think this is just like the most easy drinking kind of take on the style. And it's like textural. It's like. I, I love this wine. I, I could drink so much of this wine. Like, where did you land on the variety throughout the whole thing? Where I actually you... forgot to guess. I, I went from <laughs> from sort of like a dry aromatic white, like maybe Riesling, and then I went over back to Chardonnay towards the end. Um, the sweet wine, um, number four, which we'll talk about. Yeah. I just um, that threw me completely. But I love the first wine. I was going to take six bottles, which was my highest. <laughs> Always modest. Yeah, I had. Uh, <laughs> I think the most I bought was unsurprisingly wine number four, um, <laughs> which we'll come to in a little while. I quite enjoyed this. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I was going, yeah, like, at, at this point, tasting this wine, I'm like, it could be Riesling, could be Chardonnay. Don't think it'll be either of those things, because why on earth, at this point in the yeah. journey of the show, would they be like, here's six Chardonnays to try? But, um, <laughs> yeah, very drinkable wine number one. Dollar amount on it? 32. 32, did you have a dollar 35 amount? to 45. 35, and I had 34. So right in that 35 to 45 range. <laughs> um, lock? Oh, oh, yes. no. It's under budget. It is under budget. <laughs> uh, for you guys, I'm just blown out for a dollar. There we go. Romantic Vouvray. Vouvray. Let's go. So that is Shannon Blanc. That's Shannon Blanc. So that's not Videlo, unfortunately. I mean, it starts with a V. Yeah, it starts with a V. That's, that was, well, my whole thing was guess the V and yes. I went V for Vendetta and then went Videlo. So. <laughs> no, in fact, it was Vouvray. Yeah. Yep, Shame. Shannon Blanc. 2022. Yes, that's awesome. That's a beautiful wine. $32. Good value too, yeah. $33. Yeah, Man, that's, really that's good. That's an epic little table wine. Like, I drink this all the time. That's delicious. Let's go. Cool. Wine number two, I thought that I had some very strong opinion. Uh, this is undrinkable for me. Like, the, I could not get past the nose on this. I thought it was so specifically walked in dog poo from the backyard, like on the nose. Like, we've had reductive wines before. We've had reductive wines that smell a bit farty or smell like old socks or whatever. This specifically smells like dog poo to me. I don't want to be too crude, but I agree. Yes. But but I but it's a particular kind of dog poo. It's awful. <laughs> but it's like it's like I, like my dog growing up ate a lot of grass in the backyard. Yep. This is a this is grassy dog turd. Yeah. 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 Enough said. Like <laughs> I, I don't know. It tasted better than that. I took quite a different direction from you guys. I'm not oh surprised. my god! I'm I not saw. Surprised. I wasn't put off by the nose, I actually saw that as part of, maybe not part of, maybe not intentionally part of the winemaking style, but the things that would create reduction in a wine tend to be things that make wine more expensive. Mm. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. You know, like things like lees work and barrel ferment, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, so I actually said it was 50 to $60. As <laughs> such, I said a, like a glass because you've got to try it to know and $20. Yeah, it was a bottle for 25. Yeah, how much was it? Okay, so oh. cheap. I mean, there's some. In the bracket, in the bracket. Yeah. So pretty much the same price. Yeah. Ooh, that it is Australian. Australian. Yeah. Swan Valley. Swan Valley, Shannon. Yeah. Wow. Good work. Um, but yeah, I mean, like we've tried this producer a couple of times. We now. have. Uh, and this is just not up to their standards, I think, from what we've experienced. But yeah, it's just a bit middle of the road. And like, I think we like putting this next to that. Like, you just you buy that, mm. surely. Yeah. Yeah, oh, 100%. And for me, the label's giving like early 2000s computer software startup, sort of like you open it and these things start moving around and it's like an audio editing software or something like that. Yeah, nice label. I wouldn't drink. I oh. loved number three. I really had fun with this one. Yeah. I thought this was excellent sort of, uh, a classic line from you know, is it's tumbler wine, like in the park, a few ice cubes in a tumbler. I reckon this go down an absolute treat. It's like lemon solo squash. It's, it's all about fun. Mm. Like no bullshit, just fun. Like, you know, like to be honest, like there's faults to it. It is a little mousy 
um, like, like right at the finish is like little kind of like savory bready like you yep. know um, suggestion of mouse but it's it's almost like that it doesn't impede the drinking experience it's just kind of like part and parcel with the whole thing you go oh yeah this guy's well clearly you look at it you go oh they've not done anything to this mm. it's just literally fermented grapes maybe sulfur that's it mm. like at the end of the day I'm just like well I've kind of paid for that experience I've, I've made the gamble to drink a wine like this um, and for the most part I really enjoyed drinking it yeah Laura yeah, I thought it was really friendly, approachable, but yeah, it is that, um, it's tumble wine. Mm. It, it has to sit in a perfect price bracket, which is why $38 is the perfect price for this which wine. Which is why I wrote $38. <laughs> That's exactly why I wrote $38. <laughs> That's, That's way too much. I'm capped at $30. $30? Oh, yeah. In this economy. Uh, I, had <laughs> half, I had six bottles for 38 Six for 38 And how many bottles would you like? Two. 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 How much? Yeah! The theory, the theory prevails. Oh, goodness. And it's Yama, of course it is. Yum. <laughs> yes, there we go. Well, and Yama has been making Shannon for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if anyone was going to do a skin contact wine, then um, I think it should be Yama. Yeah. Fuji-san. Fuji-san. Yeah, the best. Um, and you know, all of his wine, what I love about um, his wines is that they're all $38. There's no um, ups and downs. <laughs> Every single wine retail, $38. Mm. He's committed to the cause. He is the he is the mean of the average of the $38 bracket. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm down for it. And like, you pay you pay the 38 bucks for the farming, the, yes, the wine the philosophy. making, the philosophy. Yep. And the, the Cherished children. childhood's drawings on the front as well. Like, oh um, man, yep, it's just cute. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's preschool fun time wine. Look, it's wine. so it's so funny that we like all of the stereotypes we make about natural wine. He just embodies, and the wines are so great. And they're too. tasty. Yeah, no, like <laughs> stereotypes exist for a reason in wines, and like that's good. Like it's, it's it does what you it does what it expects it to yeah, do, sort of thing. Exactly. Uh, wine number four, sweetie yum yums. My that's god, beautiful wine. Yeah. How good? Yeah. How good? Oh my god, like. The nose is like lemon sorbet for me, like gelati and uh, oh, mm, just loved it. Yeah, almost, <laughs> you've almost lost for words because of the, the great sweet profile. It reminded me of like golden circle, like tropical fruit juice, like just in the cardboard carton boxes with the, the straw attached. The, you yeah. put it in the freezer and you drink it as it melts. Oh yeah. That's what that is. Great shout. Yeah. Nice. So delicious. So Super delicious. Yummy. It was, look, we had that um, Moscato Dusty on the show recently. And yeah. that was, uh, like, that was sweet and all of these things. But this just feels like it's got a little bit more, like, yeah. there's more body to it or something. I don't know. It's just creamy and delicious. Ah, so I, into it's, it. it's sweeter and more alcoholic. Mm. Yeah, I loved it. It's a super high quality wine. Mm. Um, like, I think I had it down for maybe $70. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I, it ha I would have thought it's European. Yeah. Um, and it's a very well made wine. Yeah, yeah, I had it at 42 bucks and I wanted a dozen of it. It's, uh, I like, making this would just be a nightmare. Yeah. Like, I would never want to make this. Um, but I want to drink it. So mm. thank you for the people that have got more fortitude than me. Um, yeah, tw 12 bottles, 60 bucks for me. Oh, oh, oh it's 90 and bucks! And it's not a whole bottle! Yeah, yeah, amazing. Oh. Uh, Holy shit. Yeah, so Grand Cru. That, Grand Cru? That's what it says. Do they, have gr they don't have Cru appellations 110 anymore. acre vineyard. Wow. There you go. What the? Uh, okay, Grand, Grand Cru. They've, they've, they've said it twice. <laughs> yeah, and it's in case you back. missed it. <laughs> so it's uh, Cote de Leon in the district of Andre in the heart of Loire Valley. Like, um, like, you know, amazing wine. Respect to like everything they've done here. The packaging's like classical and awesome. But there's no crew system in the Loire Valley. Don't call Grand Cru and you can, unless you can actually legally back it up. It's just, it's just misconcerning. Like I like. So they've just done like Adelaide's best pizzas on that bottle. Yeah. <laughs> That's you, exactly right. Someone said so. Yeah, it's like, we've called it Grand Cru for no reason. Like, I, I'm not into that. But like the wine, that being said, if it, if there was going to be Grand Cru, this definitely should be considered for it. Yeah. <laughs> wine number five. Nutty. Nutty. Yeah, Nutty. You, you grabbed the last one. You're just naturally drawn to it. I no, no, it. I'm just drinking. <laughs> I'm just thinking about my foie gras for lunch later on. Uh, yeah, no, I uh, love this one. That was cool. Nutty, oxidative, like it's it, like it has a suggestion of it might be corked. It's got this like blue cheesy thing to it, but I just kind of look past it. But I mean, I always love this style of this variety. That kind of really oxidative 
textural, um, oaky style. Super into it. Yeah. Look. Yeah, I really liked it. That was my second favorite after. The, well, no, actually, that, now we're up to my third favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I was three bottles and fifty dollars. Forty, forty. Thirty-five to forty. Yeah. Nice. Well, now I can read your. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now I can read. Yeah. That's awesome. What? Wine of Malgus. Of Malgus. Wine of South Africa. That's oh, cool. of course. South African shade. Barrel fermented white. Yep. A blend of bush vine varieties. So maybe it's not 100% Shannon? Maybe sure. not. That's cool. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, if we're going to talk about Shannon, we have to talk about South Africa. That's just part yeah. of the rules. Part and parcel. Um, but yeah, really, really good wine. Really, really cool. Probably not, maybe not the heights of the lineup, but I think it's a really great example of what this spray can do made in that barrel fermented kind of like mm. tropical style. Super, super good. What? And that's about all we can really say about that wine. <laughs> hey, talk about wines that I had very little to say about. Wine number six, I called this an NPC white. Like, this is just <laughs> sort of like... Oh, you want a glass of white wine? Here you are. And it, it's exactly what I expected it to be. It was so nondescript for me. Like I was, I was like, oh, I've got no idea what this variety is. Maybe number six will hold the key. And I got to this, I was like, well, that hasn't helped at all for me. Yeah, um, it's exactly the same. It was nice. I didn't have any issues with it, but you wouldn't get a whole video game featured. You know, it would just sort of be a side character. It'd give you a quest or something. <laughs> yeah, but one a fetch quest. Yeah. Exactly a fetch quest mm. one. Uh, I inherently disagree. This is my favorite one in the lineup. Whoa! <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, I think this was like, if you spit like the details behind everything, like the texture is incredible. Like the acidity is beautiful. I think that fruit profile is great. It's got like nutty hits. The acidity is beautiful. Like, I just think it's like, it's so well-rounded. Um, I, I thought it was absolutely lovely. Really, really loved this. <laughs> All right, so I had three bottles and I was saying $28, which is ridiculous, but I was like, it's nondescript pub wine, so. I was 12 for 60. Yeah, yeah I thought it was a bit more um, expensive than, oh. Oh, I said I said thirty five dollars, but I did. My caveat was that I actually think it is worth more than that. But in terms of the wine that I would want to drink, I'd be yeah, really okay. happy at thirty five dollars. But yep. there's a lot of there's a lot of thought that's gone into this wine, oh. so mm. it it's is probably finesse. pretty serious. It's the yeah. finesse. What a, please tell me I'm right, Lockie. Lockie, what is it? Oh, oh, yeah. done. <laughs> there you go. No caveat required. Uh, no, but it's Ooh. it's fresh okay. and awesome. I mean, there's been some thought put yeah. into it. Yeah, beautiful yeah. label. We were just talking about brash chickens. Yeah, we had the ripple on the uh, chilled reds. Yeah, and we were literally talking about Mounier back then. Oh, yeah, we got the Mounier. <laughs> well, clearly we're fans. Yeah, we are fans. I mean, uh, Mr. Hickey is a wonderful man. Um, very, very good dude. And, like, you know, there's very few people that can't... There is a lot of Chenin Blanc material in McLaren Vale, and there's a lot of, very few people actually championing it in the region. But yeah. um, Brash is doing it. It was one of those people. And I think this is just a great wine for the, for the price and the style. I think it's awesome. I absolutely love it. I'm more than happy to take that one home. Yeah, well, 35 bucks. You were frothing it. Yeah. Um, wine of the liner. What's everyone's thought? Uh, do we give it to that sweet thing? <sighs> oh. I would. Yeah, it's I mean, so, would. It's so I different to other things that you try on this show. Um, and it's such a beautiful wine. And like the, the wine making behind it, and you know, just, I just drink it all the time. Like it'd be one of those wines, it's just like, you have a bottle and you get poured a little bit of it and they go, do you want any more? And it's like, oh, just, just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I haven't got a little bit more to give you. I've only got half a bottle of this shit. Uh, no, I'm, I'm super on board. It was my favorite by far, but like, doy, of course it was. It's yeah, sweet, sweet, yummy. <laughs> yeah, like, what are we talking yes. about here? Here we are, wine for the people. D democratizing wine. Mm. Spend $90 on 375 mil of grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, yeah, when you put it like that. No, it is still one of the lineup. It's one of the lineup. It's just one of the lineup. Res game, respect game. You've got to do it. Yeah. Uh, Laura, thanks very much for joining us this week. It's always it's good nice to have you back. You're welcome. A bit of intellect yeah. on the show. Um, but yeah, we'll catch you next week, guys. Hopefully, Brendo's back by then, but who knows? We'll see. Ciao. Ciao.